How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels, and welcome once again to Banana Fish. The last two episodes we watched went unbelievably hard. First, we got an emotionally devastating episode, and then as if to make up for that trauma, we got an insanely hype one following it. It was great. It was just an amazing example of good pacing, because after episode 9, I had assumed that that was kind of like the mid-season climax, and so episode 10 would probably be slower. Not the case. So that was great. We're riding high on Banana Fish. Banana Fish has kind of become one of the sleeper hits of this channel, at least in my opinion. Maybe not necessarily in terms of, like, my videos. Like, I don't know if I've hit any, like, you know, iconic jokes in any of these videos or anything like that. But in terms of, like, the quality of shows I've watched... This is without a doubt at like the top of that tier list. So no more stalling, let's get into it. Ato Ketai Nidai to Tablet to Tonum. Orewa Nijikan da Kenel. Switch a Kirimita in Emuchatao. Yeah, AG. He sort of had a long day. I think it's pretty understandable he'd be a little tuckered out. Mahatan no group who can't even show up Shiroto. Ashiro Testadomo no Goraz Katasgeta has da. Watashino Yashkiva Hakaisere. Ashiro Mamma to Tosusta. To be fair, your mansion started in ruins. You had a Roman death coliseum in your basement. If anything, Ash just added to your aesthetic. That man has four teeth! You lost 28 teeth from waking Ash up? I know his name is Ash, but he didn't have to turn this guy into a fucking Gengar. I don't think I ship AG and Ash anymore. AG's gonna tug the covers away from Ash one night and end up with a broken spine. I know I usually praise this show for its amazing dialogue, but that was straight out of Fifty Shades of Grey. He's their king, their god, the only man who can tame these wild beasts. My inner goddess. They should call this Fifty Shades of Ash Grey. Jesus, Ash, he said you're good with chopsticks. He didn't ask you to move in with him. This is such a nice calm after the storm. I really like seeing Ash and Eiji just hanging out and getting to know each other. I know in the intro I talked about how, like, I was expecting a slow episode after the more climactic ones. But thankfully, and I, I kind of meant that as like an insult, or not an insult, but like something I was concerned about, you know? But thankfully, this is like super sweet and really enjoyable to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Way to guarantee Ash never opens up to anybody again. Aw, you're scared of a little pumpkin? What are you afraid it's gonna jump into your vagina, you fucking pussy? Huh, bitch? Huh? Come on, look at me! Look at me, bitch! Come on, come on, say you have a little pumpkin pussy, bitch! I don't know why I turned- <laughs> I don't know why I turned AG into Jesse Pinkman there. What up, biatch? Hi! I'm here! <laughs> Yo! Holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. I thought that was an actual for real ghost. I thought I thought this show was about to genuinely introduce a ghost character. It didn't scare me because I'm afraid of ghosts. It scared me because I was afraid that this show's quality was about to fucking plummet. Are there any actual benefits a revolver has over a pistol? Like, I'm genuinely asking, because a revolver holds less bullets, is slower to reload, and has way more recoil than your regular pistol. As far as I can tell, the only actual benefit a revolver has is looking really, really cool. Yo, who knew AG would be the dom in this relationship? AG was so quick to call out Ash's bluff. Dude is not messing around. Yeah, my eyelashes are blonde. Blonde down under, too. Prove it, bitch. I know this is adapted from a manga from the 80s, 
That was the most 1940s banter I've ever seen. What was that Popeye flex they both did at the end there? They didn't modernize this conversation at all. Pretty brave of Ash to open up to Eiji like this, considering he spent the entire day bullying him. Ash, Ash, you're just sitting there. Really just stellar words of affirmation coming from Eiji here. I don't have a joke. The scene's just great and Eiji's killing it in the therapy department. Uh, stop saying shit that's gonna get you killed. The closer you two get, the worse AG's chances of making it out of this show are. God, what a beautiful, emotional moment. Completely decimated by this fan art. They cut to a worse looking image. <laughs> that is so funny. Like I said though, amazing dialogue leading up to this shot though. Just... Just before you all crucify me. <laughs> oh, hello, corrected vision, Ash. Where have you been this whole series? All it took was a pair of glasses and an unbuttoned collar to turn Ash into a 35-year-old dilf. Okay, seriously though, why is Ash going through a midlife crisis? He looks like a divorced husband trying to assert himself as the cool parent to his children. Oh, there's your first mistake. You never invest in goose. You ever met a goose? They're mean, they hiss, they shit all over the place. You want a real bird to invest in? You invest in penguin. That's where the money's at. <laughs> what, you couldn't afford a window? That room looks suffocating. It's a nice place, but I wouldn't want my living room looking like a Yakuza's conference room. <laughs> Yeah, you and me both, Max. Usually I'd be happy that me and this show are on the same page. Uh, except this show loves to see me suffer. So it feels less like we're on the same page, uh, and more like it's in my head. Speaking of being in my head, here, here's something completely unrelated to that. Brief episode transition. If you like what you're seeing here and you want to get more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you'll get access to exclusive reaction videos each month. Right now, I'm reacting to Blue Lock, and you also have access to all of my reactions to Season 1 of Food Wars up there. Top of that, you also get access to my exclusive Discord server where you can chat with me and other members of this wonderful little community. Furthermore, you also get access to all the recordings of the live streams I've done in the past and will do in the future. So if a ton of bonus content and the idea of helping out this page immensely sounds cool to you, make sure you consider checking out my Patreon in the description below. Your guys' support helps me out more than you can even imagine and allows me to keep putting out content as frequently as I do. So with all that out of the way, let's move on to the next episode. <laughs> They got Dick of the Goblins? I can't tell if that's a man, a weapon, or a medieval disease. Why would you enlist someone named Dick of the Goblins into your gang? Yo, what up? My name's Cooch Rhino. Now I don't want to see any of you trying to fuck with me. Yo, you gotta get out of that green turtleneck. You're over here looking like Cammy White from Street Fighter. Oh yeah, just open fire in the middle of this airport, Einstein. This dude was about to go full no Russian on Ash's ass. This show has the scariest villains, I swear to God. If somebody was like, leave town or I'm gonna kill you, I'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever, tough guy, bring it on. If someone was like, leave town or I'll stuff you and display you in my foyer, I would be halfway to the moon before he even finished that sentence. Yeah, so, 
ブラックサバスの動きはビッグアーシーファン、ハイアッシュ俺が直接ケインに会うあ、あ危ねえぜボス奴は白人を目の敵にしてるそれに、もし奴がオーサーと手を組んでたりしたら I feel like if this dude hates white guys I feel like the chances of him teaming up with an old rich white pedophilic man with connections to the white house are unbelievably slim That's like the whitest a man can get, right? その時はあんたでも容赦しない叫んじゃねえぞ I love how this dude gets shot and the conversation just continues on. Gah! Ugh! Oh, Jesus, he shot my hand! Shut up! Yep, my bad. Sorry, didn't realize you guys were still chatting. God, sounds like I need a Japanese boyfriend. The way I eat? I'm guaranteed to die by age 30. My diet is somewhere between a toddler's and a jaguar's. Alright, I could use someone like AG putting me on a healthy track. Okay, yeah, that was heavy as hell. But to be fair, I don't think you're becoming a murderer so much as I think you're. Continuing to be one. You've been a murderer since you were eight years old. Just because you've started to feel bad about it doesn't make it new. Look, I've re watched this scene like three times now, trying to come up with some kind of joke or commentary. And I, like, I have nothing. However, I do need you guys to know that I know. That this is an amazing scene. It's just AG and Ash being amazing characters for like three minutes straight. Like, I love how AG isn't at all over the top in his anger. Like, he's clearly trying to understand where Ash is coming from, while also trying to steer him back towards his own morals. You know, it's not just AG being like, you're, you're becoming a monster! Like, he understands the context of the situation and the trauma that Ash is going through. Like, there is just so much complexity going on with both of these characters, and it's genuinely one of the most compelling relationships I've ever seen. <laughs> What is that? A natto dog? That looks like a hot dog stuffed inside of a baked potato. I'm sure that this is actually a real food, but I do love the idea of this Japanese show being like, here, have a real American classic a hamburger stuffed inside of a brisket. Middle East. <laughs> oh, yes, the Middle East, of course. What? The hell are we talking about? This conversation came so out of nowhere. I feel like Nathan Drake in the third Uncharted game. I just fell out of a plane into the Middle East. Oh yeah, the heroin capital of the world. Afghanistan. Those damn Afghanis. Good thing they came up with a completely fictional country that sounds nothing like any real world countries. <laughs> Otherwise, someone might have gotten upset. I like I like how we have Afghanistan, but we'll still have like Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Like that's okay. Hi. Okay, I should. What is this? Oh, boo, bitch! Get spooked, pumpkin pussy. I love how Ash trusted Ag with his childhood trauma, and Ag turned into an absolute menace. So, yeah, my girlfriend. Wow, super late to be asking that question. Especially considering he jumped at the opportunity to see your dick a couple of days ago. Everyone wants to be a boss's girl, but not everybody's ready to be a girl boss. You guys remember those words. And that is episodes 11 and 12 of Banana Fish. S you know. Like, whatever. Still great. This is, like, in the caliber of, like, Yuri on Ice, though, in terms of, like, difficulty reacting to. Because it's just, like, not that nothing's happening, 
but nothing like reaction worthy happens. Like this is like asking me to react to like The Departed or something. This is like being like, Danny, you should totally react to Goodfellas. Like, like, yeah, that, what a, what a fun idea, guys. You know, like, obviously they're, like, the big scenes, but most of the show is just really subtle, well-written dialogue, which makes for shitty reaction content. If you're gonna recommend me a good show, it has to be hype. If you're gonna recommend me a bad show, it at least needs to be, like, popular and fun. The hardest shows to react to are the shows that are, like, just bad and nothing's going on in it or the shows that are so good that it's like like what do i even make fun of it's like when people are like you should react to cowboy bebop oh sick <laughs> can't wait to be known as the guy on the internet who like struggles to make fun of cowboy bebop but no like absolutely having a great time with this show love the characters like some of the best characters in any anime i've ever seen and yeah just a just a good time as always let me know what you guys thought of this video let me know what you guys uh what your favorite jokes of this video were in the comments below and what you guys thought of these two episodes as well as always i will see you guys next time